Um, hello everyone, and um, we are extremely uh, delighted to be presenting at Digital Humanities 2023 at Graz. Um, we are pre-recording uh, for the panel titled Collaborative Practices, SPT4E. Uh, the title of our presentation today, as you can see, um, is Digital Maternal Cultures, the Politics of Collaboration in or and Indian Mommy Blogs. I am co-presenting um, with Dr. Dibodhuti Roy, who is currently a lecturer in Cultural Studies, Media Studies, and Digital Humanities at the University of Leeds. I am Dr. Madhurima Das, uh, currently an assistant professor at Birla Institute of Technology and Science, Bits Pilani, India. Uh, obviously, because of uh, visa considerations, we could not be physically present at Graz, uh, but we genuinely hope that our presentation today uh, sparks conversation and leads to productive uh, dialogue. So let's get started. Um, okay. So a brief overview uh, of our talk today. Uh, firstly, we are going to go into the background and context um, theoretically of what mommy blogs are, what we are currently doing in the Indian scenario, uh, the key research questions that have emerged in that context, a brief literature review, the methods that we are using for our present study, um, analysis, and obviously the future implications and our uh, discussions in that domain. So I'll hand it over to Dr. Roy to take forward the conversation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Das. Uh, pleasure to address everyone in the room. And again, it would be nice to be physically there, but I guess we'll have to do with our online presence at this point of time. So the CFP for DH 2023 locates DH within the broader domain of e-empire and information capitalism. And why this is an important conversation, there's a significant problem when you locate digital cultures within this broad breath stroke because it creates polarizing binaries between good and evil. And uh, no place could be better to point out this kind of polarizing binary uh, than to talk about our case study here, which is Indian mommy blogs, which are always put into this polarizing binary and it falls into the global paradigm of mother, mom, or mommy blogs or maternal blogs as either you know, empowering sites or places that I, um, you know, amplify analog, analog privileges. So in examining the case of Indian mommy blogs, our intervention demonstrates how domination as well as resistance can simultaneously be built into the sites of digital culture in the fissures and interstices of global South digital cultures. And in making this claim, we are actually reflecting on the work of, uh, of Nicholas Negroponte, who in Being Digital said, if you could look at a smoothly polished metal surface at a subatomic scale, you would see mostly holes. It appears smooth and solid because the discrete pieces are so small like was digital output. And so to stress again, Global South digital cultures often make these small holes quite explicit, and they show us simultaneously the possibilities of both domination and resistance. And this leads us to our research questions. The research questions that we have um, are, of course, influenced strongly by these two kind of uh, canonical or uh, you know canonical pieces in this conversation, which is the Care Manifesto that came out in 2020, and uh, the Doing Digital book by Nicolas Negroponte. And we ask how are the social, economic, and ideological tensions of information capitalism and e-empire negotiated within the digital spaces of Indian mommy blogs? What are the possibilities, limitations, and challenges of the digital as a site of revolution surfaced in these blogs? How can digitality, much like analog factors, enhance or impede? collaborative maternal opportunities and communities? And thirdly, what pedagogical and policy articulations about a revolutionary politics of care can emerge from some digital maternal cultures? I do want to point out our definition of digitality actually takes in from a work that um, I published uh, collaboratively uh, last year, which looks at digitality as the realization of digital affordances and infrastructures in specific contexts. And I pass on to Dr. Das for the literature review. Thank you, Dr. Roy. Um, and, uh, you know, in order to examine, as, as uh, Professor Roy just pointed out, uh, the context of mommy blogs in India, uh, we are situating our work uh, at the cusp of several theoretical frameworks. And to begin with, um, we have used um, Dr. Amor uh, capability theory here uh, to better understand what, what mommy blogs are and, you know, what are their affordances. So capability is as... Uh, uh, 
omurtoshen points out are generated by inputs or more precisely the characteristic of inputs such as for example nutrition uh, from the intake of nutrients that are inherent in various food stuff so this transition from inputs right to capabilities is subject to various conversion factors which allows for this transition to take place that filter amplify or also modify the inputs characteristics right so for example hansken and robbins points out that capabilities are the basis for the achievement of those functionings subject to people's agency as well as choice uh, the next set of literature that we are, um, you know, harping on is basically an understanding of the overall Moby blog, uh, you know, the ecosystem. What, what, is, what does it really mean? For example, Hunter points out that while in the early days, Moby blog started off as being a unifying, as a site for unifying experiences, one that ele elevated everyday experience into a larger sense of community solidarity. So Moby blog has also evolved into a largely commercial endeavor that commodifies the audience. Uh, Jermic points out that, however, the rise of social media influencers has also allowed for a variety of different types of influencers to emerge, uh, including the motherhood bloggers who challenge the commodified and alpha mom stereotypes. So it's also a site of contest contestation to the pre-existing notions of motherhood. Um, and as Dr. Roy pointed out, we've also used the CARE Manifesto, uh, where interestingly they are pointing out uh, that this, this facet of anonymity, where people are not known to each other, is also vital, which is being offered by the digital spaces for those individuals, those marginalized voices, who could publicly probably not express their viewpoint, which, which might be life-threatening. But these digital spaces allow these people from across the world to share information, advice, as well as provide emotional support and a space for organization and belonging and care, which helps us think about the significant place of the digital in relation to care uh, beyond the exploitative models, which you know, care theories have constantly talked about, you know, feminized model of care and how that's obviously exploitative, with its ability to encompass care towards people whom we do not even know and cannot even see. So a stronger solidarity being built around these domains. And obviously, as Roy, Professor Roy pointed out, um, uh, his work, uh, his co-authored work, also addresses the idea of post-colonial digitality. And they define it as the contextual realization of digital affordances in post-colonial spaces, which moves away from the binary configurations of digital affordances, as well as infrastructures, their specificity, specificities, as well as limitations. I hand it over to Pro Professor Roy to talk about the methodology for this project. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Das. So as you can understand, in terms of methodology, we use an capability approach. And to talk about capability approach, technology and capability approach has previously been uh, talked about together. However, in such paradigms, uh, technology has only been looked at as a conversion factor for analog um, analog inputs like socioeconomic privileges. However, by locating digitality as both an input and a conversion factor, we are creating a dialectic relationship between collaborative maternal agency, Indian digitality, and the politics of care. Uh, and the politics of care. So our approach in going beyond an outcome-based understanding of digitality uh, focuses on Indian digitality as a dialectic between inputs and conversion factors that is realized as a process rather than a techno-positivist set of realized goals. And this approach allows us to examine Indian mommy blogs as a case study for understanding how digitality enhances or impedes the capabilities of collaborative maternal agency into the functionings of a radical politics of care within a constantly evolving uh, regime of global crisis. So importantly, the idea, again, as I, as I want to emphasize, is that we are not looking at technology, we are looking at digitality as both as an input and a conversion factor, which will hopefully become more apparent in our analysis in the next slide. So for the analysis, we are picking up discrete items from the three, three, three or four uh, major representative mommy blocks from India. And uh, I'll be talking about digitality as a divide, and Dr. Das will be talking about digitality as an equalizer and digitality as quotidian. For digitality as divide, we are picking up on this um, moms and mutual funds, which are advertised almost uniformly across all Indian mommy blogs. And in fact, moms and mutual funds are advertised across global maternal blogs. And there are particular uh, financial uh, corporations that have, uh, you know, that have been, you know, sort of supporting mothers in, in, in advertising this and including their digital apps. 
So while uh, you know digitality and divide have been talked about in many ways, and this on the face of it might look very empowering, I do want to remind our audience that this is talking of mutual funds only through the domain of digital financial infrastructures. So it creates a form of digital financial mobility at the cost of analog financial mobility, where things like cash, which are still extremely important in India, are being sidelined for the rise of digital infrastructures and payment systems that would inher inherently uh, isolate and marginalize already underprivileged populations. So therefore, uh, you know, caste class structures, which are upper class, upper caste structures are being amplified here and vernacular, lower caste, urban, uh, rural populations are being, uh, more, you know, facing further, further marginalization, which is one of the key ways that digitality works as a divide here. I pass on to uh, Dr. Das for the next two. Thank you, Dr. Roy. Um, so uh, I'll be, I'll be uh, talking a little bit about uh, these other two wings of our analysis, uh, which has emerged from a very close look um, at these um, you know, Indian mommy blogs. Uh, the second factor that we arrive uh, is the d d digitality as an equalizer. And as you can see from the snapshot, which, I'll, which I'm coming to, uh, that has been you know, taken from one of the blogs, Ma of all blogs, it's how to raise, um, how, how to raise kids to understand traditions. Now in the current uh, socio-political climate in India, uh, where there is increasing right-wing fundamentalism and Hindu majoritarianism, um, conversations around interfaith and intercaste marriages are really put under threat, uh, especially through misinformation and disinformation on social media as well as digital platforms. So therefore, in this particular example, as I pointed out right now, from Mao of all blogs, the blogger talks about bringing up children from two different cultural backgrounds, because India being a site of diversity, it's a very diverse country, you know, with 27 different or more languages. Um, diversity is an issue that needs to be tackled at the household level. And this is something which this particular blog really addresses. So how to raise children from two different cultures that uses the affective qualities of motherhood and a radical politics of care to challenge the dominant dominant infrastructural properties of digital platforms as sites of divisiveness. And here, um, the blogger also points out certain very specific uh, strategies as to how to deal uh, with a multicultural household and to promote this, this uh, you know, uh, this, this climate of acknowledging uh, a diverse environment, uh, especially in the Indian context, is, for example, connecting with grandparents, bonding over music, talking about varied, uh, you know, food tastes and things like that. So these are certain ways or portals through which solidarity can be built. Uh, the third wing of our analysis, uh, which is digitality as quotidian. So as you can see from the snapshot on the left hand side bottom uh, corner, uh, when should you consider moving on from a marriage as a mother? Okay, a, a very sort of, you know, key question here being raised by one of the bloggers. So most uh, mom blogs across the world are understood really as sites uh, of spectacle. Uh, that promote glamorized momism, which are spectacularized and idealized models of motherhood that support uh, the heteropatriarchal capitalist gaze, where this individual or the mother is just present in order to provide care to the household, the husband, the family, you know, the child, the elderly, so on and so forth. Um, and this, this model is being challenged by this particular blogger. So in this example from the fabulous uh, mom life, which is a blog that we have selected, the blogger talks about moving on from a marriage uh, while not denying the complicated realities of motherhood that are implicate uh, in such a decision, which is a hard decision. So this acknowledgement of the everyday challenges and the quotidian nature of maternity is also made possible by digital platforms that allow people from around the world to share information, advice, and emotional support and offers a space of organization, belonging, and care, which is much beyond the glamorized model uh, of, of being this, you know, frantic mother who is constantly looking after children, husbands within the hetero heteropatriarchal uh, setup. So I hand it over to Dr. Roy to carry forward the conversation. Thank you. And in closing, we would like to point out uh, what's the importance of such an intervention. In, in, in kind of talking about Indian mommy blogs, we see our intervention allowing for three major ways of moving forward. One is, of course, the idea of this being a pedagogical site. 
a pedagogical site that allows us to talk about unpaid care and domestic work and importantly the the necessity of talking about these issues within global south context where there's often no policy or regulation around these forms of unpaid care and domestic work secondly of course it talks about allows us to talk about different kinds of labor within the household space for example the idea of cognitive labor as a mother thinks about made various things that she needs to do planning play dates thinking about household uh, you know grocery items what to cook the second is the emotional labor of managing the household managing the child managing maybe often uh, you know patriarchal um, husbands as well as in-laws or even any any form of um, added responsibility that comes with it the third is the kind of intersections of emotional labor and cognitive labor that goes in anticipating and preparing for everything so that's definitely the, the different kinds of labor can be talked about and lastly i also want to talk about this is uh, heading towards uh, a more policy policy understanding of digitality where uh, f- frameworks like adverse digital incorporation where inclusion in a digital system that enables a more advantage group to extract this proportionate value from work or resources of another less advantaged group is made apparent through these kind of maternal blogs and particularly in the global south spaces so that's where we will be concluding today but uh, we hope that that raises many questions and that will lead to many conversations hopefully in the chat as well thank you so much for listening to us uh, thank you dr das as well thank you thank you pleasure